It begins with a membrane so small, so delicate, so misunderstood, that entire cultures have built myths around it. A thin ring of tissue at the entrance of the vagina, often spoken of in whispers, feared, defended, or judged. Even though most people have never truly seen one, and even fewer understand what it really does. For centuries, the hymen has been treated as a symbol of purity, a marker of identity, a supposed proof of something deeply personal. But none of these beliefs match medical reality. Why does a structure that varies wildly from person to person become tied to such rigid expectations? Why do so many assume it must tear, bleed or break when the truth is far more complex and gentle. And why do myths about the hymen persist even when biology tells a completely different story? The hymen is not a seal, not a wall, not a barrier to be broken. It is a flexible, stretchy, often incomplete rim of tissue that changes throughout life, shaped by hormones, activity, and natural development. Today, we peel back centuries of misunderstanding, separating cultural myths from anatomical truth, exploring what the hymen is, what it is not, and why believing in the myths can cause far more harm than the membrane itself. This is the story of a structure that has carried meanings it was never built to carry a biological feature turned into a cultural symbol, often at the cost of truth and compassion. Let's go inside. To understand the hymen, we must begin with its anatomy. The hymen is a ring or crescent of mucosal tissue located just inside the vaginal opening, not deep within the body, not sealed across the vagina, but resting at the entrance like a border that varies from person to person. During fetal development, the vaginal canal forms by hollowing out, and the hymen is simply the leftover tissue at its opening, not designed to block, but to mark the transition from internal to external structures. Most hymens are shaped like a half moon or small ring. Some have extra folds. Some have small openings, some have larger ones, and some have so little tissue that they appear almost absent. This variation is normal, expected, and medically meaningless. The hymen is made of soft, flexible tissue containing collagen and elastic fibers, meaning it stretches easily especially under the influence of oestrogen. Infants and young children have thicker hymens because of maternal oestrogen, which then becomes thinner during childhood and later more elastic during puberty. Its appearance changes across a lifetime, responding to hormones, physical activity and normal growth. Importantly, the hymen does not form a complete barrier it always has an opening for vaginal secretions to exit the body. Otherwise, menstruation would not be possible. The idea of a sealed vagina is a myth, and rare medical conditions where the hymen covers the entire opening, called imperforate hymen, are abnormalities, not the norm. Understanding these basics allows us to see the hymen as it truly is, not as a symbol or cultural marker, but as a simple anatomical leftover. But to grasp why myths are so persistent, we must zoom deeper into biological function and the misconceptions that overshadow it. Biologically, the hymen does not exist to break, but to stretch. Its tissue is similar to the inside of the cheek, soft, pliable, and capable of widening without tearing, especially after puberty, when oestrogen makes it more elastic. During everyday activities like walking, cycling, stretching, tampon use, or self-exploration, the hymen may stretch naturally, 
its edges softening over time. For many people, this stretching happens long before sexual activity and often without any pain or noticeable change. Some hymens have more tissue and may feel tight at first, while others have very little tissue and appear open from an early age. This variation is why medical professionals cannot see or determine virginity. There is no appearance that reliably indicates sexual history. The idea of a hymen breaking comes from a misunderstanding of anatomy. In reality, the membrane often folds outward, stretches or thins, sometimes with small micro tears, but these heal quickly and often leave no trace. Bleeding during first intercourse is not guaranteed, not expected medically, and not a marker of anything other than occasionally insufficient lubrication or tension. Studies show that most people do not bleed during their first experience of penetration. Pain, too, is more related to stress, tight pelvic floor muscles or lack of lubrication than anything involving the hymen. In rare cases, specific hymen shapes, like septate or cribriform hymens, may cause discomfort and can be treated with simple medical procedures. But these represent exceptions, not the rule. The truth becomes clear. The hymen is not a biological gatekeeper, not a moral indicator, not a seal that opens at a single moment. It is a flexible, evolving tissue that responds to hormones and movement. And yet, the greatest impact of hymen myths is not anatomical. It is emotional, cultural and deeply human. To see the full picture, we must turn to the consequences of misunderstanding. The climax of this story is not what the hymen does, but what society has done to it. A tiny membrane becomes a test of purity, a symbol of worth, a requirement for acceptance, carrying expectations it was never meant to bear. Because of myths, many people fear their own bodies, believing that pain or bleeding is inevitable, that something must break, that their anatomy must prove something. These expectations create anxiety, shame and hesitation, making natural experiences tense instead of peaceful. In some cultures, hymen appearance is tied to family honour, leading to inspections or virginity tests that have no scientific basis and violate human rights. Others fear that tampon use or physical activity will damage the hymen, even though medical evidence shows that normal movement simply stretches tissue. The pressure surrounding this tiny membrane can overshadow health, autonomy and emotional well-being. Medically, the hymen cannot and does not reveal sexual history. Even trained physicians cannot determine whether someone has had intercourse by examining hymenal tissue. Some hymens remain thick, others thin. Some fold inward, some outward. Some appear almost absent. None of these features reflect anything about a person's experiences. The real climax is the recognition that the hymen is a symbol created by misunderstanding, not by biology. Its power lies not in tissue, but in belief. And the most important shift is replacing myth with knowledge. The hymen's true story is far quieter, simpler and more human than the myths surrounding it. It is a remnant of development, a flexible edge of tissue that changes throughout life, a structure without judgment, morality or meaning beyond anatomy. Understanding the hymen allows us to rewrite the narrative, one based not on fear or expectation, but on clarity and compassion. It reminds us that the body does not measure worth, that membrane shape does not define identity, 
that biology is often gentler and more variable than the stories we attach to it. Knowledge replaces fear, easing the pressure that so many people feel. It encourages open conversation, healthier education, and a deeper respect for bodily autonomy. The hymen teaches us that not everything small is insignificant, but neither should it be a symbol heavy with expectations it could never fulfill. It shows us how misunderstood anatomy can shape lives and how understanding can free them. In separating myth from medical reality, we honour both the science of the body and the humanity of the person living in it.